There's something quite nostalgic about a boiled egg. It's something that's never lost its magic when you slice that top off and dunk that soldier into the yolk. An anchovy soldier. Anchovies into pesto mortar. No salt, naturally. Yeah, anchovies are very salty, so just a touch of pepper. Grind them to a really nice, smooth paste. The smell of that is almost like being at the seaside. Now, get your soft butter. And just put half the butter in first. 50-50 is the way, 50% anchovy, 50% butter. That way you've got that real nice salty creaminess. Mix that up. Mmm, that's absolutely delicious. Trust me, finishing that anchovy butter on a slice of grilled fish, I'm in heaven. The bread. This is a sourdough. Delicious, very crusty. Take four nice slices. Now, get that pan nice and hot. A couple of tablespoons of that anchovy oil into the pan, and then get your bread and lightly fry at each side. The smell of that anchovy oil is incredible. Take that out. Now, bring your water up to the boil. The secret of softly boiling an egg is to place them into the water gently, on a spoon, in, and just tilt so they don't hit the bottom. Nice and light. Up to the boil, count to five, turn the gas down. Is it four and a half minutes? Is it five minutes for a soft boiled egg? I've cooked thousands of them, and every time it's four and a half minutes. Whilst that's boiling, get your bread and spread that on there. That is incredible. Chopped parsley brings that kind of freshness. Goes brilliantly well with the anchovies. Hear that crunch on. I'm sorry, but I can't resist. Oh, my God. Right. Gas off. One. Beauty in. Two. I feel like a five-year-old again. This is that moment when you open the vault and that little magic inside is all yours. Mm. It's a great twist on a great classic. Wow. Who would have thought that egg and soldiers could be that delicious? Mm. A dish becomes a classic because it's delicious and somehow strikes a chord with us. It just works. Sometimes these dishes can become tired, but a clever twist helps make them fresh again. Right, Plowman's with the most amazing but super simple beer baked bread, hearty and full of flavour. Salt is really important in the bread. It's the first thing I do once I've cracked it and smelt. You want to smell that salt baked throughout. Beer in, about 250 mils of beer. And the reason why this recipe works so well is that the beer has got that yeast. So naturally, it's going to work beautifully. Give that a really good mix. I'm looking for the mixture to be quite wet. If the dough becomes too firm, then it's going to cook dry in the centre. Just as it starts to fall through the whisk, that is perfect. Beautiful. Small tins give it that kind of intimacy. And I quite like having my own little loaf. Give the moulds a really nice lining with butter. Make sure you butter the top. Now, a tablespoon of flour. Dust inside the mould. That will stop your mixture sticking. Tap out any excess. Three quarters fill your little moulds. And we're going to allow it to sort of rise just so it comes above the mould and forms this really nice miniature loaf. Onto the tray, centimetre apart. Into the oven, 25 to 30 minutes at 180. 
something quite nice about the smell of home baked bread in the kitchen. Delicious. Red onion is a lot sweeter, less harsh than a white onion. The early days of Plowman's, you've got those ghastly, sharp, pickled onions that make you almost cry when you're crunching them. I'm going to lightly pickle my red onion. Just push your fingers through so you get these nice sort of onion rings. A little touch of salt, a little sprinkle of sugar, and then a couple of cloves in there. That gives it a really nice sort of perfume and sort of makes the pickling slightly more mellow. Red wine vinegar. Now, if you haven't got red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, it's just as good, but red matches the red onion, so it goes hand in glove. A couple of tablespoons of vinegar. Just give that a really good mix. As the weight presses down on the onions, the clove, the salt, the sugar, the vinegar work their magic. And it comes up with a really nice, light, fragrant pickle. Now, generally, it's sort of three parts oil to one part vinegar. That's the sort of general base. Mm. You don't really think of a vinaigrette with a Plowman's, but this is a really nice sort of modern approach to a Plowman's. If I was making a watercress soup, I'd use the stalks. But the stalks are a little bit bitter, so I just grab them like that, pinch them, and then twist. Mm. Very peppery, very hot, but so juicy. Watercress in, your celery, chop it nice and finely. It's the one thing that everybody leaves is that stick of celery, so scatter it amongst the salad. Before it comes out, I'm going to glaze the top with a little touch of milk. That will put a really nice finish to the bread. Back in for the last five minutes. Now for the magic in the Plowman's. Generally, you'd see it as a ham or cheddar or Stilton Plowman's. It's hard to dictate which one's the best. With your cheddar, peel some nice shards of that delicious, creamy cheddar. Just get them dancing on top. The dressing, drizzle round in circles. And then finally, our delicious, lightly pickled onions. Give them a good squeeze. And look, just dot the onions around. Bread is ready. It's got that nice, yeasty smell. Warm, crusty, and delicious. And there you go. That is my classic, modern version of a traditional, stunning plowman's. Wow. To make the most out of my roast, my main course is the delicious stuffed roast rib of beef, complete with tangy horseradish Yorkshire puddings. But first, I'm enlisting the help of my eldest, 15-year-old Megan, to reinvent one of my all-time favorite classic desserts, Eaton Mess Bomb. Right, Eaton Mess. What's the one thing you love about Eaton Mess? I love the meringues. Now, this is a Eaton Mess with a twist. What's the twist in it compared to the normal one? We're going to freeze it. So it's almost like a sort of Eaton Mess Bomb. Wow. Yeah? Now, I'd like you to whisk the cream, please. Half the strawberries are going to go through the mix and half the strawberries are going to be turned into a coulis. Strawberries in first, a little dusting of ice and sugar into the pan. And now the ice and sugar will withdraw the sweetness from the strawberries and start caramelising. So let me show you a nice quick way of whisking. The secret of whisking is like 10 seconds on and 10 seconds off. That way your arms don't get tired. Now, I'm going to take the cream to a three-quarter stage. 
What is a three-quarter mix? So we leave some sort of texture in the cream. And that's okay. what we call three-quarter whip. And you've got a nice soft peak. They're caramelised. There you go. You'll put a little touch of water in there. That'll help break down the sugar and turn that into a really nice strawberry liquid. Now, to get it really nice and fine, I'm going to blend it. On. And blitz. Off. OK, that's fine. And I want you to use the back of the spoon and push that through the sieve. OK. Now, that way, you don't get those seeds. It smells so good. I love the smell. Nice. This is the exciting part. Wow. Hold on. Oh, Meg. <laughs> Meg in there. Right, now the meringue. With your fingers, just crush and flake the meringue into the cream. How big should I crush it, Dad? Or... Yeah. There. Nice big chunks. OK. Lovely. Oh, you OK? Yeah, I've got meringue in my eye. Damn. To make this dessert even easier, I often cheat by using good quality shop port meringues. A little taste, and that's just cream and meringue. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, it's a little taste. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> Strawberries in next. A couple of spoons of the coolie. Now look at that now. To prepare the mold to transform the traditional eaten mess into a frozen bomb, form a triple layer of clim film. Adding water to the bowl will help the clim film stick. As I pour that in, I want you to spread it down okay. at the bottom and push it down. Can you hear that crunch? Yeah, the meringue. The meringue. Now, fold the clim film over. Put that in the freezer, please. Meg Young, please. In the freezer she goes. Dessert done. Now for our main course with a twist. That is the ribeye. We've had that in the fridge, not wrapped. So it sort of almost air dries and it mm -hmm. intensifies the flavour. Roasts so much quicker and there's less water in the beef. For me, the only downside to perfect roast dinner is the fight about who washes up afterwards. So Meg and I are going to avoid that by cooking everything in one roasting tin, starting with the spinach and mushroom stuffing. A little bit of salt and pepper, please. Good girl. Some over your left shoulder. Some left shoulder, thank you. In with the garlic and the mushrooms. To toss the pan, you push down and pull back. Oh, gosh. Down and push back. Off you go. Take your time. Push it down. Then flip it back good. That's it. Push down. Nice. Yes. Yeah? That was lovely. And again. Nice. Oh, I'm going to well drop done. it soon. Well done, well done, well done. Right. We're going to sort of make a little well. A little touch of butter in the middle. Now, I want you to start putting the spinach in the middle, please. So you can push that down. The spinach is cold, so you're not going to burn yourself. Be confident in the pan. Toss it, and you'll see it wilting and disintegrating away. Wow. Who would have thought all that spinach could fit in this pan? Because it's a very delicate leaf. It sort of cooks so quickly. Put this all on your board now. And then I just want you to go and give that a nice chop. Then when you're confident with one hand, I want you to pick up the other knife in the other hand. Chop it nicely. Good. Now. Outside and come in gently. Good. Regroup. <laughs> and take your time. Good. Mmm, right. Oh, I love that smell. What is that? Lemon thyme. Lemon thyme, that's right. So you get your little thyme stalks and you pull them down, you sort of strip lemon thyme in. Now, tarragon, what taste? Brilliant with the beef. Fantastic with chicken and fish. Roughly chop the tarragon. A nice sprinkling of fresh breadcrumbs. So the breadcrumbs almost sort of bring the stuffing together. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to get an egg yolk. Now with the beef, this is the exciting part. Slice with the bone, and then come inside and go two thirds of the way down. Hold that open for Danny. Salt and pepper, and then look, we pack our stuffing in there. This. Amazing. It's incredible. Now, just gently hold that there like that. OK? Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. What? <laughs> Tying string around the rib will keep it all together during roasting. Not too tight. If we tie it too tightly, what happens? The stuffing will come out. That's right. That's ready for roasting. But we're going to protect it and sit it on a trivet. So a trivet, basically, is almost like a sort of little... Little bed. A little bed. That's right. 
If you want to enjoy these delicious roast vegetables at their best, make sure you remove them from the hot oven after 35 minutes and reheat before serving with your beef. Now, a little mix for the top. A couple of teaspoons of mustard powder in salt, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Mix that in. I'm going to pour my mustard powder over the beef. So this forms a really nice glaze. My one-pot roast dinner goes into a hot oven 15 minutes at 230 degrees, then down to 170 degrees for another two hours. Beautiful. For a delicious twist on traditional Yorkshire puds, I'm going to lace mine with fresh horseradish. Start with plain white flour in a bowl and crack in the eggs. Adding only half of your milk at this stage makes it much easier to whisk all the lumps out. And if, like me, you like your puddings a little lighter and crispier, add a dribble of cold water and add salt to season. When you're happy, your batter is lump-free, whisk in the remaining milk. Peel and grate horseradish and add a handful to the mix. We can leave the batter to rest while we get the meat from the oven. That is beautiful. And this is where you really need to let it rest. How long would you say to rest it for? Um, I like to rest the meat for at least 20 minutes. Just the right amount of time for us to whack up the oven and to get our Yorkshire puddings in. I love using the rich dripping, but vegetable oil is a healthier option. To get the fluffiest Yorkshires, your tray and fat must be piping hot. For best results, take your jug of batter to the oven and pour the mixture in there. It takes just 15 minutes for our Yorkshire puds to puff themselves up and turn a delicious golden brown. With the Yorkshire puddings on the way and the beef rested, we can finish off the eat and mess bomb. Run the bowl under the hot water. Twist and pull. Nice. Wow. Look at that. Beauty. It's amazing. Sit that on to your plate. Now, the finishing touches. A drizzle of the remaining strawberry coulis. I'm just going to pour this over. Amazing flavour. And some grated mint chocolate. And that is a nice twist on a classic Eaton Mess. A delicious Eaton Mess bomb. Beautiful. Let's go, baby. Please don't drop that, Meg. Meg, please. It's not a rounders match. Dessert sorted, and the beef is ready to serve up. Lift that up, place that onto the board. Parsnips, parents. You can see why we kept them in halves. They've got all that flavour. One beautiful big slice for Daddy, one for Maggie. And then on the side. The stuffing. The stuffing. The bit that's the best. To die for. Now, fantastic Yorkshire. They're style. amazing. Aren't they beautiful? Mm-hmm. That's for you, my darling. And that one. That's for me. A beautiful roast beef. With a twist. Wow. These are my ultimate classics with a twist. Juicy ribber beef with horseradish spiked Yorkshire puts and scrummy Eaton Mess bomb topped with strawberry coulis and mint chocolate.